on my Facebook account, I follow lots of different groups and fans of a lot of different things. And one of the groups that I really, really enjoy, and they always bring up really unique things, is a, is a little site uh, called Weird History. And uh, they always bring up little interesting tidbits and facts and unknown little random trivial things that make you think and all of that sort of thing. And yesterday, they posted this interesting post on two of my favorites, Michelangelo Bonarotti and Leonardo da Vinci. And I just kind of want to run through that real quick because it's just so interesting. I'm just fascinated by this post. So again, this post is from yesterday, 9.32 a.m. And it says Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci hated each other, which again was true. Michelangelo regarded sculpting as the highest art form because you can't paint over a mistake, whereas da Vinci proclaimed that painting was superior because it supported more possibilities of the imagination. Add in their 23-year age difference and their tendency to insult each other in public, and there is a, as classic a rivalry as any in history. Who do you think was the better artist? It's an interesting question, and I think the answer is almost as interesting. Now my personal opinion, I'll give that to you at the end. But in reading through the thread of all the comments and all the people that have something to say on the topic, people that maybe know something about art and art history, and some people that have not a clue as to what they're talking about. And I think that it's absolutely hilarious just to read through the comments and see what people have to say on the topic. And I just thought it would be interesting just to go through some of the comments. I'm going to pull out a few and just kind of reply back to what they had to say. So, so let's have some fun with these people. Maybe at somebody's expense, but hopefully not. It's all in fun. Michael Dane wrote Da Vinci. He made predictions for future technologies century before its time. Michelangelo, while talented, just painted a church ceiling and got a statue for it. Michael, this is a way oversimplification of both of these guys. Uh, first and foremost, Da Vinci. Okay, so Da Vinci definitely made some innovations far beyond and before his time. However, what you have to remember is he wasn't just coming up with these ideas autonomously. He wasn't coming up with them in his own original thought. He wasn't just sitting in his uh, workspace saying, oh, I'm going to come up with an idea for a helicopter and he sketch it out. Um, he actually never made models of any of these things. And if he would have, he would have discovered that most of them did not work, like the helicopter and the tank. Although, uh, again, he, the other thing we have to remember is that these ideas were coming down to him. Um, generations of, of thinkers were passing this knowledge down to him. And he was making small modifications. So, for example, uh, the deep sea diving suit that he would innovate, uh, that is in his sketches, was actually developed nearly a hundred years before he had actually uh, worked on it. However, he did make modifications and improvements on that idea by adding uh, webbed flippers and things like that that have been innovated and used to this day. However, there are other things like, for example, the Vitruvian Man, famous drawing. As we see here, the Vitruvian Man is a famous sketch, but why is it called the Vitruvian Man? Well, because it was an idea put together by a guy named Vitruvian, and da Vinci knew how to draw, so he put the sketch together. That's the reason. Now, Michelangelo, sure, he painted a ceiling on a church and he put a sculpture in it, the Pieta, no big deal, uh, except it's actually a pretty huge deal. Uh, but he also did lots of sculptures. He did lots of artworks. He did many, many pieces. And he was, without a doubt, the most versatile and uh, productive artist of all time, uh, perhaps. Uh, maybe the only artist that really compares with him would be Picasso. And let's be honest, Michelangelo blows Picasso out of the water. So. Um, without a doubt, the most skilled and versatile artist on the planet with, you know, Da Vinci, again, great artist, very skilled, but he only produced a handful of paintings. 
Why? Because he was so busy thinking about things that he wanted to do, he never really followed through with anything. He was the, uh, the, the, the pre-poster child of ADHD. He would have had ADD before ADD was even cool. Mark Robertson writes, Too subjective to the eye of the beholder, not a cop-out. Beatles or Stones, Pacino or De Niro, Brady or Manny, etc. Both men fueled each other to create to their utmost. It was healthy for the observer. First and foremost, people can't make decisions. That's just the world we live in. They want, uh, they want uh, both sides of the fence. They want to be wishy-washy. So let's just cut through the crap right here, right now. All right, number one, the Beatles. Beatles, uh, the White Album, come on now. Sgt. Pepper, out of the question. Robert De Niro, I'll take him over Pacino every day of the week. Every day of the week. Are you kidding me? Uh, Peyton Manning, hands down. He don't cheat. He's the real deal. Funny, humorous, great athlete. He got it all. The total package, right there. I'll even take Dodge over Chevy and Ford every day of the week. How about that? I'll even go a step further. I'll even up the ante a little bit on you. But when it comes to when it comes to this particular question, I think we have, you know, a philosophical debate, and we also have to bring some knowledge to the table. Now we can be wishy-washy, but let's cut right through that and start making some decisions. Rufus D. writes in, back then, artists did it all. Da Vinci also did sculptures, Michelangelo did paintings. Both were involved in architecture. Da Vinci's interests went well beyond artistic endeavors, though. I agree that Michelangelo was a superior artist, but it was Da Vinci who had the greater impact on society. Both men were geniuses, but Da Vinci clearly had the greater intellect. Now Rufus brings up a really great point because everything that he said is actually 100% accurate. Now is it true that da Vinci made sculptures? He, uh, he did. He made a couple of uh, wax statues of horses. He also had one that was a giant horse that ended up actually uh, falling apart. So most of these sculptures that he was doing were actually more experimental pieces than they were intended to be uh, of a final product nature. And that was kind of da Vinci's calling card. He was forever the experimental artist. And I think it's important to recognize that's what he did. Uh, he was more into science and experiments and seeing how things work as opposed to making final products. And again, being a little bit ADD uh, of sorts before his time, uh, I think that that really caused him to lose interest in things like uh, finishing and following through with various projects and products. So although uh, one could maybe argue that he had more uh, real life things that he was attributing to society, see the previous comments because a lot of those ideas weren't really his, they were taken from others. Although. Um, you could, you could probably argue it either way. Mr. Powell writes in, I'd have to side with Da Vinci. Michelangelo, although possibly equally gifted, was less open-minded and did not show respect due to Leonardo. But Steve, I think we have to remember the question. It wasn't who was the most respectful Renaissance artist, but who was the best Renaissance artist? And without question, um, in the words of my wife, Michelangelo was an asshole, and <laughs> he uh, and he was. Michelangelo Michelangelo was not a nice guy, and he rubbed people the wrong way, and he had a severely broken nose because he was critical of another artist, and he smashed him in the face and broke his nose, and he had fights with the Pope, and he had fights with Raphael Sanzio, and he threw him out of the Sistine Chapel and barred him from entry, and. He had disagreements upon disagreements with Leonardo da Vinci when they worked together in Florence, uh, in the meeting hall of the uh, uh, one of the one of the official buildings of the um, the Florentine government, a governmental building where they were both painting uh, murals uh, uh, simultaneously, and uh, they had knockdown drag out fights. Yes, indeed, they did, and they did not like each other. Absolutely and um, he was opinionated and he was a jerk and by contrast 
da Vinci was a sweetheart. He was a loving man. He was a good man. He uh, was a great singer and a very sensitive man. Um, him and his um, male friend of his that traveled around and, and even though he was a they called him the little devil even though he was an awful human being to Leonardo he kept him around why because he was such a had such a big heart he was such a good nice person um, but again we're not talking about who is the nicest we're talking about who is the best Tasha Ray explains I could never compare apples and oranges I just love fruit just by observation, man, there were about a hundred different people that had posted something along the line of apples and oranges, apples and oranges, apples and oranges, apples and oranges. These are not apples and oranges. Right. These are contemporaries that are working. They're working in a very different way. They're thinking in a very different way. Their focus was a little bit different, but again, Painting is painting and sculpture is sculpture and when you compare Da Vinci's sculptures to Michelangelo's sculptures, we have to come to conclusions. Who was, in fact, better? Ryan Geronic sums it up beautifully, fake news. We live in a world of fake news and alternative facts uh, and I think that it's one of those things that, uh, you know, if you don't laugh at, you're pissed at. So. Might as well just roll with it. So um, one of the things that, that we can probably all agree on is that the fact that both of these guys, regardless of what side of the fence you're on, it, they're, they're both great artists. They, they both had artworks that would go on to revolutionize the world. And again, whether you're talking about the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, or you're talking about the altar of the Sistine Chapel and the Last Judgment, or you're talking about the Pieta, great artworks, great influences, and great contributions to Western culture and Western art from the Renaissance perspective. Uh, the, the High Renaissance wouldn't have been what it is without both of these guys pushing each other and arguing with each other and pushing the limits of what they could and could not do and really bringing back this rebirth of the ideas that were built by the Greeks and the Romans and bringing that back and they would go on to influence others, like those that would follow uh, during neoclassical times and, and artists that really wanted to perfect things and make things idealized and perfect. So, who's better? Uh, my personal opinion, if you haven't gathered it by now, is Michelangelo is uh, far superior. Uh, just by output and creation and ideas and the, the, the things that he was able to accomplish. But, again, both very fascinating characters. I've read hundreds, literally hundreds of books on both of these guys. I own a pile of books as tall as I am on both of these gentlemen, including all of Da Vinci's notebooks. Uh, I've been to uh, I, I've been to Italy to see many of these artworks and they're absolutely fascinating. Uh, and um, if you get a chance, actually observe their work. I mean, it's phenomenal. So regardless of the side of the fence you're on, whether you're with me on ti uh, Team Michelangelo or you're on the other side of the fence there with, with Leonardo, it really doesn't matter. We're all uh, Renaissance brothers at the end of the day. So thanks for watching uh, and uh, have a great day out there. Getting attacked by a butterfly, I think.